the bathroom. I'm not in a mask of any type. And she sits on the toilet. She passes oh. out. So we're like in an embrace, yeah. basically, like face oh, to man. face. And so I pull like the emergency thing. Everybody runs in and the charge nurse comes in. And I was like, so can I have an N95 now? Like, is, is this not? Because I'm about to make out with this woman. <laughs> like, I couldn't be closer yeah. to her. And we're very close physically. Like, when you see the pictures of like the ICUs, like you, not that the not that the people aren't entering the rooms, but there's a lot of things that they can do to minimize entering yeah. the rooms. But we can't no, do you that. Have to be like, like we are in the rooms all the time. Like people are huffing and puffing. They when people are pushing, mm-hmm. they're taking these big breaths of air and then blowing yeah. them out. And it was just like, and also, it's in fecal yeah. matter. So. And- like we're all yeah. up in it sweat too so, and everything you know and it's right. and if they are so sick was, that's really gosh like that's scary yeah and if like so if you were sick and pregnant you weren't on, on our unit you would be in the covid oh, wow. unit and you would be also additionally monitored by us but we had people that were in labor that were covid positive wow and what so that then, you know, like you, for them, I mean, they could, they, they it, couldn't see the baby. It must be then. Horrible. Like, how would you, I don't understand how that they would actually, work. actually like, that would be so hard. There was a lot of, and the, the other thing is that the information was changing yeah. so fast. Right. So eventually like everybody like got it together. So the nurses got N95. So we started testing everybody. So we knew if they were COVID positive or not. Um, they actually are a hospital oh, very quickly switched from separating the babies yeah. to keeping the babies together oh. because especially if the parent is breastfeeding, it passes antibodies to the baby. So it's actually oh, a good thing. Okay. Um, so, but it was like literally every day would be like a different thing. And so I'd have patients and they'd ask me a question and I could be, and I would say like, I'm not sure because I just got here today. Yesterday, the answer was this, but I just need to double check and find out for you. But it was just stressful. And it's, you know, the PPE is, and I can't even complain about the PPE because we weren't in it like all day, all day, like the COVID units were, but it's very hot. Um, It's really uncomfortable. Um, You know, like we were wearing our N95s and, for a long time until they like fell apart basically now we get one every three days every three shifts when was your first surf post covid it took me a while yeah um because i was freaked out in general yeah (laughs) rightly so and and i was sort of like like, what if I got hurt and I needed to go to the I hospital? The I don't want to be yeah. in the hospital. Um, so it was probably like, I mean, it was like four or three weather. Yeah. That's like late I May, best probably. Describe it, so. Late May. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was me too. And me too. I waited till like mid late May. I missed a lot. We missed a lot of surf, but. <laughs> You know, I was like, yeah, I'm not going to be that dude that gets injured and goes to the hospital and wastes resources. I was just like, that's not, I'll wait till things settle, you know? Yeah. And even from like a more selfish point of view, I was like, I don't want to be in an emergency department right now. Exactly. Because, you know, I I don't want to get COVID because I needed to go surfing or something. So so how how was that first surf then? Did it feel good? I can't. Re- yeah, I, I mean, like, it always was feels it like, good. Did it feel like a release? Yeah. Did it feel like therapeutic? Were Actually, you feeling? I, do, I do remember. I do remember. It was um because I went out with Nigel from yeah, Station, he's great. and I was totally scared. I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know how to surf anymore. Like I don't like. I was like afraid, but afraid in a unreasonable, irrational way. And I think it was just like a reaction to everything that had been going on. 
and being away from it. Cause like, if I don't surf for two weeks, I feel like I forget how to do it. So, you know, having been out of it for so long and I, you know, and I was like, we're on surfboards, so nobody can get too close. But like a lot of people like weren't really masking. And I was just like, ah, and you know, yeah. And that's where my, when I had like my Ron Burgundy Anchorman COVID dream. Oh, let's, I want to unpack that one for, for the listeners. I yeah. was doing a little Ron Burgundy warm up uh, before the show. And Ellie's like, let me tell you about this dream. And I'm like, save it for the show. <laughs> so let's so let's do it. You, <laughs> so you know that you know what Santa Con is, right? Yeah. Obviously. Oh gosh. So thank God Santa we got Con's spared like it this year, right? <laughs> right. So in my dream, Santa Con had been replaced by Anchorman Day. Anchor Con. And I went into Anchor Con, <laughs> yes. And I went into a deli and all these guys were dressed up like Ron Burgundy from Anchorman, screaming like Will Ferrell screams <laughs> without masks on. And I was like, we're going to die here. <laughs> boxer. And that Where was is my boxer. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Like this, like the spittle is like flying. And everybody, you know, like, I think he's probably pretty tall yeah. in real life and I'm pretty short. So like everybody was like above me and, and it was and just gorgeous like, gorgeous heads of like, hair. Partic- <laughs> yeah. And like, just, it was like all this spittle was like raining all over me in this deli. And I was like, I just want to get a vitamin water and now I'm going to die. <laughs> now I got COVID from Ron Burgundy. <laughs> right. Like not even the real one, like fake ones. <laughs> <laughs> so like at the end of the anchorman where uh you know where or in the anchorman where he he tells everyone to go fuck themselves and right <laughs> you're a bad man ron exactly. burgundy <laughs> exactly exactly so yeah that was you know that was like i that was my only like real covid dream i've had plenty of like other anxiety dreams and stuff but yeah when getting back to the first surf i was I was scared. I was scared in a way, like I was scared of like the yeah. ocean. And, uh, and Nigel was just like, you're fine. And I was like, he's like, Ooh. it's one foot. You know. <laughs> I was kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, exactly. <laughs> but, you know, it was, and it's the same thing too. Like, cause when I went with him, like usually I surf in the sixties, but I was out at the nineties and I was like, I don't know. I've heard that the people here aren't nice. And da, 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 da. But he was like, Oh my God. Like, and I was like, so now you're my therapist. Like now I'm going to just unload all this stuff on you. And he was like, he said such a nice thing. He was like, you know, you have just as much of a right to be here as anybody else. Mm-hmm. So like take the wave. and and so. I surfed in the nineties a bunch, like in the spring and the summer and like met like nice people up there. And, you know, again, I don't go by the jetty. I'm like sort of like mid beach where that like other set of waves are. But, um, but yeah, it's just like, I've, you know, it's just so nice to be out there and be in the water and like, you're, you know, everything feels so out of control mm-hmm. in a bad way, but like when you're out in the water, it's like out of control in a good way. You're detached from everything too. There's no devices. Mm-hmm. Well, for many of us, there are no devices. Um, yeah. You know, it's, you know, it's one of the few times, that, you know, actually now where I'm without a device and without all the other stuff and it, that's, which is one really sad, but two, like, that's our escape and and that's our place and we should want to make it a, a a friendly place a less hostile place so that we can go relax um you know there's yeah obviously rules are important but you know attitude is probably the most important i think and, yeah yeah and i think just like being friendly and like i know that there's, there's that saying is like the best surfer is the one who's having the most fun yeah. and i'm like I do think that there's, you know, some truth to that because like, if I'm having a blast, mm-hmm. then you can't like take that away from me. Yeah. Um, so. Exactly. Exactly. You know, I, 
And that's part of the reason why I like it when my kids come too, because they're like, you know, they're total digital natives and they don't know what it's like to like not have the internet or whatever. And we can be out there for a long time and they really like it. And they're old enough where I don't have to worry about them like drowning too, which is like the other nice thing. It must be nice to connect with them uh, with surfing too. You know, particularly as in the teenage years where kids can kind of, you know, just want to have their own little life. You know, it's a a really nice, very special thing, actually. Yeah, it is really nice. And my daughter has gotten more into it. Like, she won't get up with me early because in the summer I'll get up really early and I'll go. And she's like, there's (laughs) no way. But if we go in the afternoon, like when it's not so hot and the tide is working, then you know, we'll surf until like it gets dark. And that's like my favorite. I love that. I love going out at the end of the day. Uh, the late um, Arvo session. Cause it's so nice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, like it's a kind of a while back drive to the house and, you know, we chat or whatever. Do you, and do you have a, do you guys cute. stop off somewhere along the way to get a nice, do you, do you go to new, new park well, pizza? Is that, is that the spot? Sometimes I really like old country bagel. Yeah. I think they have the best bagels in oh, New York. Shit. Heavy throwdown. Yeah. <laughs> I know. It's crazy. I went there on a whim and I was like, oh my God, this bagel is delicious. Now, now I got to try so, it. Yeah. They have the big sign. It has like a bagel on it. All right. Um, so, so, so Ellie... What I hope, I hope many of our listeners can take what what could have been a, a negative incident between us and use that as a model for how we others can behave when they have incidents. And how, let me ask you before we close, like, how would you like it if someone, how, what's the way uh, someone could give, give advice without being uh, condescending, uh, but if they see someone struggling, what, how is the best way to approach mm. that for people like me who want to maybe help or maybe there is an incident, uh, you know, the drop in? How do, how do we uh, talk to someone? In a, uh, the sound, I sound so dumb saying that maybe, but <laughs> I don't know. But how would, you, how, how would you want to be talked to then? How would you want someone to approach yeah. you? Um, well, I mean, I've definitely been in situations where somebody has like, you know, like I'm sort of like surfing and like maybe like a group and like, I know one people, one person, but I don't know everybody. And I've had some people been like, come on, we're going to get you a wave and like, just like do this, you know, like scooch up a little bit, come over here. Like, we're going to get you a wave or whatever. Like, especially when I got like my newer board and you know, it takes a while to adjust yeah. to like, you know, I was on a foamy it's before, a so, step. you know, that was, it was a, yeah. And then there was one time where I was surfing and this, you know, this, like, I kept just missing the wave and this, and this guy was like on the next one, um, put your feet down for a little bit longer. Like you're kicking your feet up too early. Mm-hmm. And for what it wasn't even so much like what he said, like what he was saying, but it was just like the general, attitude like again like he was smiling we were chit-chatting like so instead of just being like if you just paddled one more time you know (laughs) like one more stroke like you might want to just get that shoulder in a little bit more when you dig in you know (laughs) yeah yeah or like the guys that like the locals guys or the new york surf school guys like they'll say stuff to me all the time but i know them Mm -hmm. and it's also like i know it's friendly so i think like probably if like you see somebody and you want to help them i would say like try to establish like the barest minimum of like friendly connection before you say something because as a woman in the water, I don't know what it's like for guys because I'm not a guy, but like as a woman, it comes off very mansplaining yeah. if you just like come out and and tell me what to yeah. do. Um, and then in terms of like altercations, I guess the best thing to do is just assume that there is no ill intention mm-hmm. and that person was either unaware of the danger and or etiquette and that's an opportunity to just 
let them know. And if it 